A very good afternoon and welcome back to the Touchline on Y254. My name is Maxwell Wasike. Keep talking to us. Tell us the team you're supporting at the FIFA World Cup finale set for tomorrow. And today, this particular evening, of course, it's third place playoff, pitting Croatia up against uh, African representatives Morocco, which is a cut and raiser for what is expected to happen tomorrow. It's been a month long tournament happening in Qatar, bringing 32 teams to showcase what they are capable of doing best. Of course, African teams as well, getting represented by Afri five. African nations in Ghana, Senegal, Cameroon, Morocco, and Tunisia. So we get straight into what is supposed to happen, the nitty-gritties of FIFA World Cup tournament. And just before we got uh, on air, we were discussing about, you know, the influence heavy players have had on this particular tournament in the name of Cristiano Ronaldo, whose team Portugal uh, was eliminated by Croatia. Morocco. Morocco, the African heavyweights, and you know how he's been emotionally, probably thought he would end the career on a high by lifting the tournament. He has missed winning because he has lifted almost everything in terms of UEFA Champions League, English Premier League, La Liga, and even in Italian Europa. League with Juventus. Good to uh, continue the discussion with this gentleman, Barry Silla, alongside Ken Andrew. You guys were discussing about Cristiano Ronaldo fire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What is it with him? I think, you know, uh, you, you have to feel that it's maybe unfortunate for him to not bow uh, on, on, the, on his peak, you know, at the height of his career, you know, because at the end of his career at that seven, he's seen three of, of the five games he's played at the World Cup on the bench, you know. He started on the bench, which has been sad for most fans, you know. It's not great to see him. He really wanted to win this, but he was not given the opportunity to fully go at it and, you know, he left the pitch crying, you know, he knows it's gone, his dream is over. But then again, you know, sometimes age does catch up to you and you have to be accepting of things as they happen. And maybe Ronaldo still has that uh, feeling that he wanted to do more, but, you know, his body, even though it's in immaculate shape, will not allow him to. But he's had a great career in his defence, he's won everything, he's just missed out on the World Cup and, uh, you know, men will still regard him as the greatest of all time. The greatest of all time indeed. According to me, is the greatest of all time, despite, you know, crashing out of the tournament at the quarterfinal stage, having been eliminated by African mm -hmm. uh, representatives in Morocco. But I read in one of the online publications that one of his sisters, you know, wanted Ronaldo to travel back to Portugal so that they could, uh, you know, hug him, console him, mm -hmm. having been... You know, left out of the squad by mm. Fernando mm. Santos, the coach, mm. when they played against, was it uh, yeah. Morocco. Morocco and Morocco Switzerland? Yeah. And Switzerland yeah. When Ramos was scoring a hat trick against yeah. Switzerland, mm. against yeah. Switzerland. Yeah. What do you make of this? You know, getting excluded of Portuguese squad by Fernando Santos, who has now hung this boot. I think I have a different view. Uh, well, prior to the tournament. There was a lot of talk between uh, Fallout, Manchester, and uh, and Christian. Mm. And in my view, Fernando Santos didn't want to didn't want a bit of distraction. Ronaldo is a big name player, and uh, it's not that he was not fit to start any game. Uh, Ronaldo, uh, in my view, there were distractions, and maybe also the way he handled the fallout with Manchester, perhaps seeped into Portugal. Uh, and then there was a bit of back and forth. Uh, but Fernando maybe is the head coach, is the final decision maker. He, he, he wants to stamp yeah, his authority. Yeah, he wants to stamp his authority. But in my view also, Ronaldo is a big name, even outside the field. What he does on the bench, he encourages the player. What he does in the changing room, he encourages the players. So perhaps the coach had a different strategy and uh, the coach had a different plan with a different set of players. Uh, so. That's why maybe he made the decision, Ronaldo, to sit outside. Also, Ramos taking it to Twitter to say that sometimes Ronaldo as a player gets to be mis uh, misunderstood, especially by misreporting by media and several uh, uh, international press outlets who report that, you know, Ronaldo is so full of himself and he always wants to achieve and, like, you know, not putting the team ahead but his self interest. Yeah, yeah. There's always been that idea that Ronaldo is, whenever he doesn't play, is grumpy, you know, he doesn't want to, to listen to the coaches, you know. Maybe some of his actions have helped push that agenda, but if you listen to those who play with him, they still respect him. Uh, when they were walking into the Portugal camp, you know, there was something being made bigger than it was when him and Bruno Fernandes came into eye contact yes. after, 
after the whole interview with Piers Morgan came out. But Bruno came and owned up and said that Ronaldo had made a joke and it was totally nothing. When other players, William Cavallo, they take to the press and they just say that Ronaldo is okay and he had no problem. Even the coach himself, Fernando Santos, said Ronaldo was okay with being at the bench. You know, he, he even ran to, ran to celebrate with his teammates. So maybe the idea is being propagated mostly by people who have not have found Ronaldo in different contexts. People have not uh, exchanged a conversation with him because from the ones who play with him and from Portugal, the amount of respect he gets, you know, you have to question whether he really is what people make him out to be. But then again, you know, some of the decisions he's made, like to walk out of the Tottenham game, the, the interview, they sort of push the agenda. But, you know, I choose to believe but that he is a man who has been totally and radically misunderstood by the greater... By, by in people. fraternity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's talk about what is said to happen this particular evening and you know it's a third place playoff happening at 6 p.m. Croatia playing against Morocco and the game will be live and exclusive on our mother station KBC. So is tomorrow's finale pitting two-time World Cup winners Argentina alongside holders and reigning champion France taking and playing and locking horns against each other in what is considered to be a breathtaking showdown of the weekend. So it's a super weekend Yes, yeah, yeah. Croatia yeah. up against Morocco, can where are placing your money? I'd like to see, uh, you know, Luka Modric bout at least with a bronze medal to his name. So do I. <laughs> but then again, you, you have to imagine how amazing it will be if Morocco finished third, you know. That's yeah. African representation and that's minority representation in the world. And, you know, it will cause great joy not only to Africans themselves, but also imagine to the Muslim community across the My good the camera world. guy is... <laughs> Uh, you know, post to your position, yeah. probably things that, you know, Croatia needs to lift it, I don't know. Yeah, yeah but I, I feel like <laughs> it will still be great. You know, both teams have, have found a place in people's hearts yeah. because they are not necessarily in the biggest favor, right? You know, and how they've progressed through the tournament has been really amazing. Croatia knocking out Brazil, Morocco doing the same to Portugal. So I feel like this game is for anyone to win, but it will have great, great results for the countries of both teams representing them. Franklin Umtiti saying that, you know, the world knows one goat, and that is Leo Messi. Tomorrow, expect his magic as usual. Vamos, Argentina. Uh, there's another guy here called Driller Finest. Kumoja, utapata ke mizote zimefungwa na hivyo ndo utakuwa mzazi. I don't know. I'm not understanding his message. Brian Caleb saying France will retain the title. Vivian Lyrical saying, you know, France all the way. Kisumu locked. Maurice Jacob Makoha saying France... They know I'm with Argentina. Carry thing tuned in Kubu. Uh, the show is massive. Uh, one person called Atanas Amulele saying, you know, Nyahururu, you are tuned. So plenty of feedback coming in, and people are telling us the team they are rallying behind as far as tomorrow's final is concerned, and even third place playoff. France looks like they are enjoying fanatical following. Yes, France looks Is it like because of African connection? And several players who are featuring for them, yeah, yeah. resembling most of us. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think, but also apart from that, uh, France, when it comes to the World Cup, they, they, they tend to be a bit serious. They will not play the best fluid. In fact, if you've realized this tournament, yes. France has not ex exactly played eye-catching football, you know, save for maybe those occasional darting runs by Mbappe. But they are very efficient. They remind me of the Germany of 206 backwards. Very efficient, they do the job to the latter, they get the job done. And I think based on experience and how they are able to cope with pressure because they, they're usually very calm, uh, I, I, can, I kind of give them an edge, even though what we hear on social media, sometimes we cannot really be sure. A couple of players might be um, either missing or, uh, or uncertain. But if you look at the bench, there are also players who can be able to replace. The only headache for the show is maybe for key players are the replacements, or if there will be replacements, are they up to the scratch for a final? But if you ask me, the 27 months score this guy had in the World Cup is uh, led by, of course, uh, their captain, Loris, and their senior players there like Giroud. And of course, the, the manager himself is uh, having played in that stage, having won it as a player and as a coach. I'm sure that gives them kind of some edge, telling them just be calm, play your game and we can have it again. So for me, I think France. Just like I indicated, of course, the third place playoff and final set for tomorrow, third place playoff, this particular evening, cut in raising the culmination tomorrow, are said to be 
broadcast live and uh, exclusive on KBC channel on our mother station so you can sit pretty comfortable at your sitting room and enjoy the proceedings as they happen in Qatar and you know this tournament has attracted huge following not only from men you know but also our female counterparts have loved the game so uh, people who are at the gallery led by our producer uh, Beatrice alongside the likes of Diana and uh, Yvonne you can also tell us which teams you're supporting because people in the studio here looks like they're rallying behind France even on our social media platforms you know Bonfa Sodar, good luck for Croatia, you know. Tommy Baski saying wa Kenya to Ksema Croatia to win, we jua Morocco isha lose. Hakuna <laughs> aja ya kuleta hii game like <laughs> Dan Maniwa Kabusa saying that Croatia to win because Morocco they said they were not Africans. Even if they win World Cup, the win will be for Arabs. They said that. Yeah, they, or they one, are being quoted out one, of context. One of the players, or the captain, the Buffal, it's called Sofian Buffal. In an interview, said it will, it, that will, that was a, I think the what game was that they won, and then they said this is for the Muslim world. Yeah, for, then, coach, then the coach came later to try and diffuse the situation that he uh, talked about Africa and uh, was representing Africa. I think he tried to do damage control, but the damage had been done. The damage had been yeah, already yeah, yeah. done after the by this player, yeah. sentiments by the captain from Morocco saying that it's for mm. Islamic fraternity. Mm. If they win, the people are... Yeah. Yeah. But, but you know, I'd, I'd sort of understand it because, you know, it's his religion. Yeah, yeah. And also the other thing is that the, geographically they'll always be Africans. You know, yeah, they yeah. can't escape that. When you go to the map, yeah. Morocco is there. And they even participate in AFCON, Chan. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. you know, maybe he said it, you know, uh, in the height of things was the happening. It was picked out of context, but, you know, I'm well, uh, they, they have to be well aware that they are Africans, mm -hmm. they always participate in AFCON, and they are also Muslim, so you know, mm -hmm. they'd want to win for both. Yeah. Partnership between Lionel Messi and Alvarez featuring for Manchester City has been superb up front. At some point I was imagining, did Lautaro Martinez get excluded from the squad? Because Alvarez boy has been doing phenomenally well scoring yeah. goals. So, you know, the defense for France, led by Rafael Varane, Upe Makano, uh, need to be uh, you know, having something to worry them at the yeah. back line. Yeah, yeah, but you know, like the wealth of experience at the at the back of France is something that they can get. You know, guys like Kunde have not played for that long, but they look like they're real player. And he's playing at right back. Yeah, and he's playing at right back. At so some point, he had his chain yeah, <laughs> in the game. on <laughs> in the he neck. Had to take it off. Yeah. So you know, like I feel like the defense will have a really, really important job, especially Varane. You know, he's the leader because if you look at the 2018 squad you know he was a key defender then and he's also a key defender right now a lot has happened between the four years in terms of him moving from real madrid to man united and he's not having have had the best career at united yet but you know in france he's really really important so he is the one who will have to really up the game the, the as we were talking before you know when it comes to Messi, you have to mark the space and you know varan is not known for his physicality and, and he's more of a rolls royce he waits and mm -hmm. picks his moment so i think that might come as an advantage and he's also met Messi a lot of times in El Clasicos and also, you know, he is the key person there. And also Hugo Loris, his experience and his leadership is very, very important at the back. Do you think France are missing the legs of Karim Benzema up front as their soul striker and uh, uh, Paul Pogba alongside Nkolo Kant? No, not at all. Uh, in fact, the players who have been picked... Their positions are well covered. Yeah, yeah, well covered. Giroud has done his job at 36. He's being amazing. Surpassed yeah, yeah, Thierry yeah. Henry's yeah. goal scoring spree. Chuomeni and Rabio, it means we don't need Pogba and Kante. No, and, and there's also the replacement there of Fofana. I mean, France is complete. They don't need these other, these other guys. They can as well be replaced. So for me, they, we have not really felt, the, 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 we have not really missed Kante, Pogba or uh, Benzema. So is Argentina. During that time, they had the likes of Gonzalo Higuain, Sergio Kuna, Aguero. Yeah. You know, they have front department looks sharp and prolific yeah, yeah. Uh, way better than how they look before yeah yeah it is and you know if you look at what they still have on the bench uh, you know i feel like dibala is still a player who could have given more but he's not unfortunately it's, he's not at the opportunity lautaro he kind of misfired in the last two group games and in the in the court in the round of 16 so alvarez seems to have pan permanently taken his place but you know moving forward you know uh, i feel like a country like Argentina really needs to invest in, in, in finding players that si are similar to the ones playing at the World Cup because of the aggression we are seeing from them. 
you know, people who play like Rodrigo de Paul and Paredes are really hard to find because the aggression they have in the game, you know, they, they don't always get red cards, but they win almost every tackle. I think that's something amazing. This, because something that has characterized this Argentina side from losing the first game is the aggression they've put into the game. If you look at Messi, even Alvarez, how they're always fighting, you know, that's something that has really, really helped them. So I feel like they didn't have that in 2014 because Aguero, Higuain, nice people, you know, if that's what you can call them. But this time they are not that nice. They, they want to fight and that's something that will kind of give them a little bit of an edge over France because if you look at the French side, there are a lot of young players who are not that aggressive. As hosts, we are always told that we need to practice impartiality and not disclose the teams we are supporting. But, you know, I was rallying behind England, which got eliminated mm. at the semi-final stage by, you know, France. Mm. But now in the final, I think I'm rooting for France to defend the title. But I've been impressed by McAllister. Yes, McAllister. A huge revelation for Argentina side. Yes, McAllister has been excellent, uh, the Brighton midfielder, and I, like I told you off air, uh, the next transfer season is definitely going to... One you won't stay at Brighton. Top five clubs in the world will take him. He's been excellent in the middle of the park with Rodrigo de Paul and Leo, Leandro Paredes. Uh, I think some of these tournaments, when you is pick... It's a platform to showcase what you're you, capable yeah, of so what, that you get spotted. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Look at Konate. Nobody even knew him before he went to Liverpool. Now he's, 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 he's one of the key men uh, at the back for, for France. And so I think... Uh, uh, this tournament has showed us that some of the players that have been picked have taken the chance and, and, and shown. And this is uh, perhaps what we'll see even uh, today, with Yusuf Onoi maybe, is, 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 is definitely a star in the making the 22-year-old player for Morocco. And tomorrow also we will see uh, other players shine um, for, for both sides. So it's something to, to be very, very alive to. Yeah, there are always platforms for you to or get to market yourself internationally. You remember during 2018 World Cup in Russia, this striker from Colombia played for Madrid and he was a top James, scorer. Yeah, James Rodriguez. Uh, James Rodriguez, James I think, James, yeah. banging in six goals and no one yeah. uh, knew him before. Yeah. So he got an opportunity to, you know, play for heavyweight yeah, clubs like yeah. Madrid. Yeah. So I think most of the players who are featuring in this uh, World Cup edition will be sold to mm. you know some lucrative clubs elsewhere right yeah yeah, yeah. especially from the moroccan side mm. guys like amrabat mm. and even the goalkeeper he mm. might get a, a better move guys like saiz have shown great experience so mm. yeah you'd expect big big moves in the january and next year summer's transfer window mm. yeah. wow now let's talk about ken the nitty gritties of what is expected let's start with this evening croatia up against morocco yeah. you said you would like Morocco to win, but you are a little bit skeptical that, you know, yeah. Croatia might carry the day. Yeah, I feel like it's a game for both teams because of how both have played. Either can have, Yeah, either can get day. it because there's a great story at the end for each. You know, for Modric, you know, that's uh, two semi-finals in a row and also, you know, a bronze medal for Morocco is a shining light to mm -hmm. all those who think will not make it. So, mm -hmm. this is a win-win game. At 37. At 37. He's one of the oldest... Uh, yeah. Players to grace this tournament. Yeah, he's one of the oldest to grace this tournament alongside the guys like Pepe, Cristiano. You know, to see those guys go, it will be sad. But for Croatia, you know, it's a good ending for them. They've had a great time, the, the fall of players. Lovren, Perisic, you know. And it's sad for them not to make the final, but if they can get the bronze medal, it will be an amazing send-off for them still. But for Morocco, credit to them, you know, no one saw them reaching this. Everyone had their hands on Senegal to be the African representation past the quarterfinal. But it's Morocco and, you know, they can add to their shine by getting the bronze medal. Someone was saying that it's high time this third place playoff gets scrapped off because <laughs> it, the, there is no significance I know about it any longer. I know there's no significance, but remember even like in athletics. Do they, people remember one, about one, two, three. No, no, they remember only the winner. Are third placed at no, the FIFA actually, they only remember the winner. They don't even remember the runner. <laughs> so I think it's just a formality uh, so that all medals are given. They'll be given bronze, then silver. I don't know, number two, get silver and then gold or something. Yeah. The medals. Yeah. Yeah. Tomorrow's final? Uh, I think Barry. for me, the, what I'm looking at is the battle in the middle. He, 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 he used the term Rolls Royce. The French team will be a bit fluid. 
but they have to be careful because we have people who are coming for them, the, 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 the aggressive style of the midfield. I think the battle will be in the midfield. If uh, whoever controls that midfield, uh, also we expect maybe France to utilize the, the cleverness of, of, of uh, Antoine Griezmann, just sitting in front of the maybe two holding midfielders. So, him. At the semi-final stage, the success and win mm -hmm. for Le Bleu revolved mm -hmm. around him, right? Yeah, uh, so key, he'll be a key player, this guy. I hope he doesn't, uh, if he doesn't get hacked, because of course the Argentina are going to be very aggressive, but he'll control the, the, the dimension of the game. And uh, I think for, for Messi to suffer in this game is if these guys cut that supply of the, mid, of the midfield and the aggression of the midfield. So Messi might have to struggle a bit. Maybe at some point I saw him in the, other, the last game, he was going a bit inside to look for the ball. Another thing maybe is to, to look at uh, the wing play, the wing, uh, the wing uh, fullbacks and the wingers of, of either side. They can also carry the day uh, based on how they defend and how they attack because some of the goals for, goals for both each side have come from the flanks. So how you defend or how you attack. Both managers, do you think they will stick to the squads that, you know, won them semi-final stages? Mm, I think, yes, they will, because, you know, there's sort of been some sort of consistency in selection for both managers. For Deschamps, it has happened longer. It's just that some players are said to have been hit by a virus, so that might hamper his plans. But I think he'd naturally want the ones who have been there before to start the game again. So there won't be a lot of changes but the game will be characterized by both teams being so fast mm -hmm. and so efficient in terms of play. Mm -hmm. When they get the ball, they want to score because we've seen that with Argentina. They are, they are monsters on counter-attacks, mm -hmm. but also you have to remember the, the, the Usman Dembele and Kylian Mbappe, the other side. Yeah. They are fast and yeah. they, can, they can beat anyone in the world. So that's, mm -hmm. that's, the game might become an open game where the, the ball is just moving because you know in the midfield, it's going to be really, really hard for anyone because of the aggression of the Argentines and also Chaumeni has been great you know he's had he's shown good wisdom in the midfield so that's going to be a great battle to see and whoever wins it I think will assist this team in winning the match. Gentlemen it's been a pleasure doing this with you guys every Saturday afternoon of course from 1 to 3 we're keeping it sporty talking about the headlines shaping you know the most vibrant and robust field locally and even internationally. FIFA World Cup coming to a culmination tomorrow it's been an anthem. long Great showpiece, you know, bringing the two teams together, African teams as well participating. Five of them, unfortunately, three getting eliminated at the group stage one at the quarterfinal and Morocco, you know, defying all odds to get you to the semifinal stage, getting beaten by Argentina, one of the probable and potential winners of, you know, the tournament. Heading into finale tomorrow, it's up uh, against, you know, two sides that were tipped favorites to clinch. The overall championship France, the holders and reigning champions up against Argentina. Two-time World Cup winners, also known as Albi Celeste. Lionel Messi looking forward to win something that he has not won in his cabinet so that he become the greatest of all times. God, would that happen? We look forward to see that coming to pass and remember that getting cut and raised by today's third place play of Croatia up against Morocco, which did extremely well in this World Cup, despite having been written off when the tournament was commencing. My name is Maxwell Wasike. Of course, keep talking to us. Hashtag touchline Y254 Wasike Maxwell to Y254 channel. Let's continue interacting and mingling on our social media platforms even as the show comes to an end. Thank you for tuning in. God bless and have a fantastic weekend.